Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be working on the subframe for the charger and getting the engine repositioned in the fixture. So as you guys remember, I made these really, really nice mounts for the Hemi. I really love them. So I still want to utilize those, but to get all of this stuff into the fixture and get the mounting for those mounts, I need to position the engine block into the car, then mount it to the subframe and then I need to mount the subframe into the fixture and then I just need to pick up those points off of that. So it's kind of a lot of work. I'm gonna rebolt the Trackhawk transmission to the Trackhawk block and we'll get it all back in the Magnum. It probably will take all day. I mean, it's a very long and tedious process. I have to make some stands to support the block. But what I'm gonna do first, let's move the Grand Prix out of the way move the Durango out of the way. I was planning on doing this outside, but my extension cord for my welder isn't long enough. I now have the Trackhawk block back into the fixture at the perfect angle and perfect position. So I had to do it this way because I couldn't, as you guys remember, there was a bar on the upper part of the fixture. So I couldn't bolt the block into the fixture, which caused a big issue, which I had to resolve. So what I ended up doing was I bolted the subframe into the car, bolted the block into the subframe, bolted the transmission onto the block, put the cross member, the transmission cross member into the car so we could get all the angles correct since I couldn't do that in the fixture. So it just was a really long route to get the same results. But now I have all of this in the correct position. I can remove these engine mounts and I'll probably remove these frame horns so I can, or the, the subframe horns which connect to the frame on the car and I can get the locations from the engine mounts to the lower fixture. After I do that, I can remove all of this stuff, then I can put the upper fixture into it, then I can translate those mounts up to the upper fixture because I don't think it'll be a good idea, idea to have the mounts located into the lower fixture. I think it'll just be really a pain to get the fixture apart if it's that way. So the upper fixture will have these locations as well as the engine mount locations. And I think that's all it's gonna have. Oh, it'll also have this location right here. And uh, I think that's all it's gonna have on there. But uh, it, was, it was a very long process. While I had the Durango out of the shop, I ended up cleaning the shop up because it was really getting to me. But without being able to move the Durango out and you know the Grand Prix was on the pad, it, it just pretty much stayed looking disgusting. So now we have a clean shop. Um, I cleaned up over here as well. I need to clean up that area, but I have a lot of stuff now on pallets and I have a lot more area for pallets because I condensed a bunch of stuff and kind of combined it and kind of made everything and sorted everything into the same piles. I need to pretty much get rid of this stuff for the Durango, the parts Durango, not really get rid of it, but I need to list it and put it on a pallet, probably on an upper shelf with all, kind of with all the charger stuff up there. And then once I get done welding all the stuff on the Durango, I need to, or I want to move the Z into the other shop. So once all this Durango stuff, 
over here isn't sitting under the lift, I'm gonna put the 240Z under my 240SX and it'll give me the whole shop in here back instead of having this 240Z sitting here. So it'll just be really nice. Plus once the Durango is getting, after I spray the outside body, I can get all of the Durango Hellcat interior, which is under that um, welding blanket and get all of this stuff over here cleaned up as well. So what I wanna do now, like I said, let's get this engine mount stuff situated, get it translated into the subframe fixture, and then we can start making the subframe. And I think, I think it'll go pretty quick just because I already have quite a bit of stuff already bent and ready to go. I just finished adding the last few things from the charger all wheel drive subframe, which included the wire harness holder for the electric power steering rack and the four locations to mount the splash shield. So I wanted to keep the splash shield underneath the car because it helps in aerodynamics. It also helps to keep water and road grime and rocks and dirt and all kinds of stuff off your engine and out of your engine bay. But I just kind of, tack some stuff in here because they're not really that, it's not really that critical of a point. It just needs to be, you know, that height. It needs to be in that location. And that's about it because on the splash shield, the holes, it's an M6 bolt and it has like an M16 hole. So I think we'll be okay because I drilled these for M6 and these are M6 bolts. So now all I need to do is separate this thing for the last time and I can start finally building the subframe. And I'm very happy to be to this point because building a fixture is a very, very tedious process because you have to think of everything that you need to add into the subframe. Usually just doing you know, an, an all tube subframe, it's not that difficult to build a fixture. If you're just copying a subframe and you're trying to make it into a tube subframe, or maybe you're trying to make a subframe and make it bolt a different engine into it. It's a lot easier because all you're worrying about is the engine bolting, not all the suspension pickup and geometry, as well as the, the steering rack, adding a front diff, adding this, adding that, adding, keeping and retaining splash shield and all these little connectors that you want to retain. But we're finally there. So let's get this apart and start finally building the front subframe.
The charger front subframe is coming together and I think it's coming together pretty well. So I have all the mounting locations. So this subframe bolts into the charger, but there's quite a few brackets that I will need to have cut. So I have made templates for most of this stuff. I still need to make templates for the lower control arm pickup points and some of the diff mounting pickup points, as well as in the front, there are the splash shield mounting points and I also need to retain the tow hook. So on the splash shield, you can see the hole right there in the center. That is for the tow hook. When you have all the splash shields and trays and all the aerodynamic stuff on the Challengers and the Chargers and the Trackhawks and the, the Durangos and all the you know Dodge products, there isn't really anywhere but that for a tow truck driver to hook a you know chain on there to pull it on a truck. I don't plan on the car breaking down, but I want to prepare for the worst situation where if I you know blow an engine or something, they can pull it onto a rollback and you know they're not going to damage anything. So this is pretty much, I like how it's coming out. I mean, it's really, really nice. It sweeps back. I think it's going to eliminate a lot of the issues that the Trackhawks have and the Durangos have with their weird subframe where they had to make custom exhaust manifolds, which they still make 700 horsepower on the exhaust manifolds, but they're like a log style. So I should be able to use the Hellcat exhaust manifolds with this subframe. And if I wanted to, I should be able to use the Hellcat headers if I if I ended up getting headers. I'm probably gonna end up turboing it anyway, but this will give me a lot more room. So I'm trying to make it as open as I possibly can. As you can see, I kind of retain the same idea for the engine mounting. It's kind of like a V. The engine brackets, I need to get three more of those cut because only one was long enough. So as you remember, the first iteration didn't turn out too well. I had a guy helping me. It was just kind of a catastrophe, but now I think this is gonna work out very well. It gives me enough room for the differential and all this stuff down here. And it also leaves it open over here for the exhaust manifolds, keeps everything nice and tucked up. It's in the 45 degree V as the, the same as the block. So we shouldn't have any weird angles in the mounts should do what they're supposed to do. And it should hold a lot of horsepower. So when bending a bunch of tubes to make a subframe, or a roll cage and to keep strength in the subframe or the roll cage, you wanna keep everything, the tube, as straight as you possibly can. If you could build the whole roll cage out of straight tubing and you know, it, well, you wanna have the least amount of welds as well, but if you could like have a roll cage that was completely straight, or if I could have this that was completely straight, it'd be way stronger than all of this bent material. But, Something you can do to reinforce this to make this stronger. So as you can see, if you have triangles, it makes it stronger. So I'm gonna use a piece of maybe inch and a half or inch to connect this. And then there will be a triangle right there. And maybe the same thing right here. I might have a you know bar come up to support that, but I'll also have bars coming across. So I might not have to do that, but I do wanna do that right there. And then right here, it really doesn't matter. I could just put a piece of you know, metal in there. I could have this bracket right here, box that in a little bit, but it shouldn't really matter too much as long as most of it is supported. On the engine mounts, I'll probably put you know, little support triangles on each side and that will keep the rigidity through those. And uh, then I'm gonna have you know, a bunch of stuff with the differential. I need to figure out where I'm gonna mount the steering rack. So what I wanna do is I wanna get the differential, all the brackets, all the lower control arm mounts and brackets cut, tacked in there, and then I can bolt this into the car with the subframe, with the lower control arms, and then also with the knuckles, then I can position the steering rack, make some little marks and figure out where I want it because I want the tie rods, you want the tie rods to be as straight as you possibly can because if they have a weird angle, they could bind. So that's really the reason well, I could have used the Trackhawk steering rack setup because it was built into this subframe. But the reason I didn't want to do that was because I wanted to utilize the Charger electric steering rack. So it's a little bit more tucked in, doesn't have so much, you know, the, the Trackhawk ones have a super long steering shaft and it just, uh, it just kind of gets in the way of a bunch of stuff. So if I could use this one, I'll probably have to use like a U-joint to change the angle because it will be sticking up a little bit to go over the differential. Then I'll just have to have a U-joint directly on the end of it. I think it'll solve a bunch of issues, but since I moved a bunch of stuff around and since I'm using all wheel drive 
an all-wheel drive subframe, um, the lower control arms, the knuckles, and uh, the pickup points for, and then I'm gonna flip the knuckles around from left to right side so everything is correct. That will make the steering rack in the front instead of in the back. And uh, then I'll, you know, I'll figure out where the steering rack is gonna be. So it's, it's a lot of thought that goes into this because it needs to, needs to work. I mean, this is a lot of money in tubing. Um, I've used probably for this, well, for the fixture and probably for this subframe, I'll probably use like two or three, maybe almost three 20 foot sticks. Maybe, maybe three because this fixture has a lot of length to it. So I was messing with positioning of stuff in the front subframe. Tried to fit the charger electric power steering rack, which kind of turns into an issue. So the shaft actually comes out right here, but then the engine mount is right there. Plus it sits too far forward because it isn't made to tuck up against a diff. The really nice thing about the Trackhawk slash Durango one is it tucks up and then the shaft is on the outside of this bar. So I think I'm just gonna end up using this steering rack and, well, not this one because I need another one. This is just mock-up diff, mock-up Trackhawk steering rack, but get a new one, use that, use the, uh, use a refurbishes diff or get a brand new diff or whatever. But then I will have, you know, no issues with the steering shaft and uh, no issues with anything else. One thing I may end up having to do is remake this bar right here just because it touches the diff, but I haven't added the brackets. So I think the diff might sit down just a hair more, but if I want to, I could move the diff to wherever I want right now. So we'll see what happens. I wanna at least get one diff mount pinned in there, or maybe, maybe these two, the rear and the side one. And then I could start messing with, you know, steering rack position and I need to get the lower control arm mounts cut so I could get those tacked on. So I could bolt a lower control arm, bolt this in the car, and then I could get, you know, the knuckle and stuff on it and make sure that everything's gonna fit and work with each other. If it doesn't and stuff starts getting in the way of each other, like really, really bad, um, I may just end up doing my own custom lower control arms, but then I will have to pretty much get the center point for the pickup so I can get everything so it lines up and I don't have any caster issues. So this is a long process, but it is, uh, it's working and it's just, you know, it's just trial and error. So let's get this in the car really quick and make sure that it doesn't contact anything. I don't think it will and uh, see how she looks and then just kind of go from there. The subframe is mocked up in the mock-up Magnum. This thing has come in handy, but everything fits really nice. So what I'm very happy about is I'm going to end up using the Trackhawk slash Durango Hellcat steering rack, which gives me the steering shaft on the outside. The only issue is it has a super long shaft. So what I did before is there's a C-clip, you just swap the super long shaft for a normal charger electric power steering shaft, and then it shortens it up then I could use a U-joint and I need to change the angle from where the steering shaft comes out of the car and then make it come over to the steering rack, which, which shouldn't be that big of a deal. Then the lower control arms, I'm gonna just box them all off of these mounts. And then I need to cut all of those plates as well as cut everything for the, the last three plates for the engine mounting, as well as all the plates for the diff mounting. And then I also need to figure out how I'm gonna mount the steering rack, which shouldn't be that big of a deal. So I think I'm gonna end the video here, but I'm really happy with all the progress that has been made on this. I mean, a lot of thought has gone in this. I need to figure out once I get the lower control arms on here, which I'll do that in the next video, get all that, that metal cut, get the lower control arms, or it'll get tacked in, get the lower control arms on there, get the suspension on there, and then I'll figure out where the sway bar is gonna mount. That'll also let me figure out where I'm gonna mount the steering rack, make sure it's gonna be in the correct position. And then I'll have the, be able to have the diff mounted in there and everything else. Just so I know that there isn't gonna be any further issues with the front subframe, but really happy with the progress that has been made and where we're at because it's very close. 
Happy New Year's. Because it is New Year's, it's uh, you know it's a day late. But if you like these videos, make sure to click the subscribe button, throw a thumbs up, throw a comment below. As always, see you guys next time.